Okay. Would you, would you open up your Bibles, please, to Luke 10, 1 through 20. We're going to read 1 through 20, Luke 10. Okay, let's bow in prayer before we start. <clears throat> Gracious Father, we thank you for your holy word. Keep us in the word, Father. Thy word is pure, the Bible says, therefore thy servants loveth it. Thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy, saving our souls from uh, the lake of fire. Uh, keep us uh, <clears throat> looking unto Jesus, the Bible says, the author and finisher of our faith. Bless those that are listening, Father, as we uh, search the scriptures. We thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> okay, Luke 10. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore he said unto them, the harvest truly is great. But the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house ye enter, first say, peace be to this house. If the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. And in the same house, remain eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house. And into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But <clears throat> into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same. And say, even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be sure of this, that the kingdom of God has come nigh unto you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than for that city. Woe unto thee, Chorazin. Woe unto thee, Bethsaida. For the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon, which had been done in you. They, <clears throat> they had a great while ago repented, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which are exalted to heaven, shall thou be thrust down to hell. He that heareth you, heareth me. He that despiseth you, despises me. He that despises me, despises him that sent me. And the seventy returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Okay, let's turn over to Revelation. Uh, last week we we went to um, verse uh, two, Revelation twelve, <clears throat> or. Uh, 11 revelation 11 and uh, we've seen that the rod in chapter uh, verse one is the word of god read like unto a rod and um and to ri um, rise and measure the temple of god would be um 
uh, all the fullness of believers, see, uh, God's elect that are in the temple of God. Um, God knows all those that are in his kingdom, all those that he has written in the Lamb's book of life, uh, those that he has predestinated uh, to salvation. Um, you know, when you read the Bible, go to Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> When you read the Bible, um, listen to this language. Jesus talking to these Pharisees, and um, <clears throat> um, the verse where, uh, look at verse 22 and 23. Many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name uh, done many wonderful works. Uh, then will I profess to, unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. See? And now, of course, this is God, the Lord Jesus Christ, saying, I never knew you. In the sense that these, these were not God's elect. They were not chosen. I never knew you. But when we look at the language for the sheep, go to John chapter 10. When we look at that language uh, over there, John 10, uh, look what he says in verse 14. <clears throat> John 10, 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. And am known of mine, say. And then in verse 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. See the language uh, with Matthew 7, where he says, I never knew you with these Pharisees and those that uh, that were not of God's elect. But then here we know God's elect by uh, Jesus saying, I know my sheep. See, and so uh, this is uh, God knows those that are his. See, uh, in fact, it says, go to Second Timothy, uh, where, where uh, we can read that. Look at look at Second Timothy two nineteen. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every one of them that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Say, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Say. So, um, very clear that the Lord predestinates his sheep. He chosen us before the foundation of the world. Say, whereas the other... The others that aren't in the book of life, he'll, he said to them, I never knew you. Okay, so go back to Revelation 11. Uh, the temple of God, measure the temple of God. And we've seen that when we're in Christ, when we're born again, uh, we, uh, we are in God's kingdom, in his temple. These are the body of believers. And um, uh, God is the, Christ is the temple of God. Uh, we looked at that last week, uh, the different temple of, temple of God, uh, temples of God in the Bible. But here we see that uh, when we're in Christ, uh, we are the temple of God, see, um, the body of believers and the altar and then that worship therein. But the court uh, would be those that uh, that say, Lord, Lord. Uh, these are not God's sheep, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it's given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city would be that same as the temple of God, uh, the church, God's elect during the time of great tribulation, shall they tread upon, underfoot 42 months, which is <clears throat> a figurative or a picture of the great tribulation, 
not a literal 42 months, but rather a, a number given to point to the great tribulation. And then we go right into verse three. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Okay, so of course these two witnesses is the church, is the saints, it's the sheep, it's God's elect, those that are saved during the time of great tribulation. Okay, the two witnesses. I just want to show you how God uses two to point to uh, his church or God's people, his, his elect. Go to Genesis. Way back in Genesis chapter 7, uh, if you can see the, the spiritual teaching of the ark, and if you look at verse 15, it says, And they went in unto Noah into the ark two and two of all flesh. And we know uh, that the Lord uh, brought these animals into the ark, see? And uh, God brings his church, his sheep, into the ark. And it's and that's and there you have two and two of all flesh, uh, pictures of, of believers, wherein is the breath of life. So God uses two uh, to point to the church. Also, the verse we just uh, looked at or read, go to Luke 10. <clears throat> Did you catch that? Uh, Luke 10, uh, verse 1 there. Okay, Luke 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face. See, So the number two, depending on the language, would point to his church bringing, going forth. Here it's going forth with the gospel, spreading the word. God's sheep, okay, God's elect, uh, before his face into every city wherein himself, uh, he himself would come. Okay, go back to uh, Revelation 11. So we see the two witnesses uh, point to um, God's elect during the time of great tribulation. So I'll give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy, and that means to foretell events or speak forth, and these, uh, what do we do? We speak forth what the word of God teaches. We speak forth the gospel, see, and uh, we already know from verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 11, it, it, and it says, and he said unto me, thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Say, eh? and so uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna see in 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 this chapter that the uh, we're called prophets. So the church is called the uh, witness two witnesses, um, and then we're gonna we're called the two olive trees. We're called the two candlesticks, and then over in verse. 10 were called two prophets say same same teaching it's the believers during the time of great tribulation but here it says um uh they'll prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days which is one thousand two hundred and sixty days and so this again is a number uh given to the time of great tribulation we already seen uh that in verse two at the end of verse two they're going to tread these gentiles or a uh, picture of the gospel being silenced when it says and the gent uh and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months say and and if you take uh 30 and you time that by 42 uh, you get 1,260 days, and, you know, 30 days in a month and time it by 42. And so 42 months, or you can, it's the same as 1,203 score days. It's, it's the same 
the teaching there. But we have to uh, understand what does it mean clothed in sack, sackcloth, all right? What does that mean, clothed in sackcloth? So um, we're going to go to Esther and find out uh, what went on there about sackcloth. <clears throat> Go there. Go back. Uh, right bef uh, before Job, you have Esther, <clears throat> Job, and Psalms, and then you have Esther. <clears throat> now, if you look at uh, uh, um, chapter seven to start with, three through six, there is a man. If you've read through Esther, there's a man named Haman, and he was an enemy of the Jews. And he wanted to have all the Jews killed. Look at chapter 7, start with verse 3. Then Esther the queen answered and said, If I found favor in thy sight, O king, <clears throat> and, it and if it please the king, let my life be given me at my petition and my people at my request. For we, have, for we are sold and I and my people to be destroyed, to be slain, and to perish. But if we had been sold for bondmen and bondwomen, I had held my tongue, although the enemy could not contravail the king's damage. Then the king Hazarus answered and said unto Esther the queen, Who is he, and where is he that durst pressure presume? in his heart to do so. And Esther said, the adversary and enemy is this wicked Haman. Then Haman was afraid before the king and the queen. So Haman uh, wanted all the Jews uh, slain, as it says in there in verse four. Okay, so there was, a, uh, now go back to chapter three, and there is a, um, so the, so when the king uh, re gave in to the request of Haman, uh, look at 13 and uh, chapter 3, uh, 12 and, and 13. Then were the king's scribes called on the 13th day of the first month, and there was a writing according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants and to the governors that were over every province and to the rulers of every people of every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language. In the name of King Ahasuerus was it written and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, both young and old, little children and women, and one day, even upon the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. So these Jews would be a picture of believers, and um, it's similar to, uh, we're going to see what, what uh, Mordecai did, because Mordecai is a picture of a believer. Look at chapter 4, look at uh, um, we're going to read um, one through three. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in verse three, and in every province, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there is great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Okay, so because uh, Haman wanted the, and, uh, the Jews to be killed and, and the king uh, granted that, then uh, the believers or the Jews uh, were clothed in sackcloth because 
they they wanted all the Jews to be killed, see? And so this really ties into what we're studying here in, in Revelation, because it's a time where um, uh, the Great Tribulation, where the two witnesses are killed, just like back in Esther, see? And Mordecai and, and those, they were clothed in sackcloth. And these two witnesses would be the same as Mordecai and the Jews back in Esther, see? And, and so in verse 3, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days. Like I says, it's the same as 42 months. 30 times 42 is, is 1,260. And so this is the time of great tribulation where Satan is attacking believers and silencing them with language like the that he's going to overcome and kill them, like in verse seven. And, and then in verse two, they'll tread upon, uh, they'll tread upon the holy city and, and uh, they shall tread underfoot 42 months, which is the great tribulation period. See? So these are believers and uh, that are uh, clothed with sackcloth because it's a time where the enemy like Haman is attacking the believers. See, it's a time uh, that God has fu is fulfilling in his word that the great tribulation has to run its course. And, uh, and, um, and of course, it says these things that it has to happen. Look at Revelation 17. Look at uh, verse, verse 17. For God had put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled, see? And so this, this chapter has to do with great tribulation as well, 17. So uh, this is prophecy being fulfilled uh, as we go through the great tribulation. But the Bible teaches Right after this runs its course, that's when Christ comes. That would be the end of time, see, where the gospel is silenced and uh, Satan has taken his seat. Remember last week we looked at he takes a seat in the temple of God. And, um, and uh, this is where he's going to uh, silence the gospel, see. He'll tread underfoot the holy city. And this is why uh, the churches will, will be dead because the true gospel won't, won't be there, see. And so uh, this is a time, as the Bible puts it, great tribulation. So 42 months, 1,203 uh, score days or 60 days, clothed in sackcloth, see. So you see how Esther ties right into uh, Haman wanting to kill the Jews and the believers put on sackcloth. Same thing right here. Uh, the the believers are being uh, trampled upon the the gospel uh, and and re the gospels being rejected and uh, attacked. Say now let's go right into verse four uh, again. Two witnesses are the same as the two olive trees uh, and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. So just in these two verses, we know the two witnesses, the two olive trees, the two candlesticks, all point to the church, to believers during the time of great tribulation, because uh, they prophesy 1,260 days, or three score days, which is the great tribulation period. Say. Okay, so... Um, we're likened unto two olive trees. Go to Psalms 52. <clears throat> I just read a verse over there. Look at verse 8. Psalms 52 and verse 8. Okay. Psalms 52. I'm going to read verse 8. Okay. 
Um, but I am like a green olive tree, see, in the house of God. So when it, uh, we know the number two, depending on the language, we've seen they went in the ark two by two. The Lord Jesus sent them out two by two. Uh, uh, here, two olive trees. I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. Okay. So we see uh, pictures or language that were likened unto olive trees. And then also go to Psalms 18 about um, a candle. Um, look at 18 verse 28. David here, thou will light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. See? And so a uh, candle, uh, two candlesticks, he's, David saying, I, he will light my candle. See, it's, uh, these are believers. Uh, when we see the number two uh, there, two, two olive trees, two candlesticks, we're likened unto a candle, we're likened unto an olive tree. And then one more is in Zechariah um, chapter four. Zechariah, back it's with Daniel, Micah, and keep going. You'll Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, and Haggai. Then Zechariah chapter four, and then look at uh, verse. Let's let's read two through four. Zechariah four, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick of all gold with a bowl upon the top of it and the seven lamps thereon and the seven pipes to the seven to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof. Figurative language uh, that point to Christ and the gospel, the light of the gospel, seven lamps would be the complete perfection of the, the light of Christ, the light of the gospel. Now it says, then it says verse three, and two olive trees by it. We know those are those are the believers, the church, uh, God's sheep uh, by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Now, I want us to go down, go to verse 11, where he explains what these are, uh, 11 through 14. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? Okay. And I answered again, and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? In other words, it's the church that the Holy Spirit is in them, and the gospel comes forth from the two olive trees. See, through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil which would be the gospel or the word of God and out of themselves. So there's the Bible says there's treasure to be desired in oil in the dwelling of the wise in Proverbs. Say. So um, the oil is the gospel. It's the Holy Spirit. It, it comes out as we bring forth the word of God. Now, verse 13, and he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. And then he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. See, born again believers, the church, the God's sheep. There's the two again. Two now he's it's two anointed ones. See, same as the two olive trees or two olive branches. See? And so that it would be the church, the number two with this language, see? And, and so uh, two olive trees, two anointed ones, it all uh, pictures God's church, God's elect, okay? 
But back in and go back to Revelation 11, uh, this is a time of great tribulation because uh, they're prophesying uh, that 1,203 score days, which is the, the, uh, a, a figurative number pointing to the great tribulation. So. And then it says, um, standing before the God of the earth, say, because we've been resurrected. I just want to read one verse. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Look at verse 1. We've been resurrected in Christ. Uh, we stand. Uh, verse Chapter 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. See? And so, standing before the God of all the earth. See, we've been risen in Christ, uh, the church. And uh, and so, uh, let's go right into um, uh, verse 5. And it says, and if it, remember, figurative language we're working with. Uh, you can you can uh, numbers and their spiritual meanings, uh, types and figures. You have two witnesses. You have two candlesticks, two olive trees. See all figurative language that that uh, the God, the Holy Spirit, reveals to us the deep things of God. Okay, so uh, we'll probably have enough time to cover this verse and. Uh, and so it says, if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. So you ought to know uh, them is, is the two witnesses, the two candlesticks, the two olive trees. See, we know it's the body of believers, God's sheep during the time of great tribulation. What comes out of the mouth of the believer, see? Of course, it's the gospel. It's the word of God. Let's go to Jeremiah 23. Look at verse 29 there. Jeremiah 23, look at verse 29. Is not my word like as a fire? said the Lord. And the Bible says, if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. Figurative, spiritual language. We see that the fire is the word of God. That comes out of the mouth of the sheep, the believers, see? And is not my word like a, as a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Okay, so fire comes out of their mouth, and we know uh, that is a picture of, of the word of God, okay? Uh, the Bible teaches us these things, say. Just, th that's why I'm going to these verses. Um, go to uh, uh, Acts now. Go to Acts. Okay, one, hold on for a minute. Go to Jeremiah, one more. Go to Jeremiah 5, look at verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 5, 14. Wherefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my words and thy mouth fire, and this people would, and it shall devour them. Okay, so uh, is not my word like unto a fire, see? Okay, one more is in uh, Acts chapter uh, 2. Uh, and then look at um, 1 through 4 and then verse 11. Acts chapter 2. <laughs> so you see fire is the word of God. And Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound of, from heaven as of a rushing wind, mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. 
and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each one of them, and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Say. And what they were doing is speaking the, the word of God. It says in verse 11, Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Say. So they were speaking the word, the gospel, say, in, the, in those languages. And so... Um, but there it says a tongues of fire, see? And we see that's the word of God. Okay, so go back to Revelation and in and and, uh, verse five, if any man will hurt them, God's witnesses, his two witnesses, or those, the church, the two candlesticks, the two olive trees, fire, see, proceedeth out of their mouth. The word of God that brings judgment that brings uh, uh, God's wrath uh, when people reject it. Say, remember, I just read Luke ten. He says, that "Any though anyone that despises those that despise you despise me." See, and so if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. Uh, remember, the word of God brings judgment. And if any man will hurt them, them is the the two witnesses or the two candlesticks, uh, the two olive trees. He must in this manner be killed, see, by fire. And so um, when you when you look at that language there, um, I want us to go to uh, John uh, chapter uh, 12. Look at verse 48. John 12 and look at verse 48 he that re rejecteth me and receiveth not my words which is the, the the fire is not my word like unto a fire hath one that judgeth him see the word of God will judge that person the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. See, and that's why it says, uh, uh, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed by the fire, by God's word that will judge that person. And, and of course, um, God uses uh, fire as judgment. Um, I just want to show you a few verses and then that should do it. Go to uh, Psalms 18. Psalms 18. Six through eight. Psalms 18. Six through eight. Hmm. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he cried unto my, cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because of because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostril, and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. See? fire out of his mouth so spiritually uh god's word uh is, is used in judgment for those that reject the gospel see um so uh, a few more verses that talk about uh, about the, the fire came out of their mouth or the mouth look at psalms 37 30 37 verse 30 the mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom and his tongue talketh of judgment is not my word like unto a fire says the lord say and his and his tongue talketh of judgment say so there's uh 
there's going to be those, uh, of course, in this on this earth, uh, many that reject the the word of God, the the gospel of Christ. Let's look at uh, a couple more. Uh, Proverbs chapter ten. Look at uh, eleven and thirty one. The mouth of the righteous is as a well of life, uh, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. So uh, the righteous, or the mouth of the righteous, fire cometh out of their mouth. And here the mouth of the righteous is a well of life. To those, of course, uh, that uh, hold to the true gospel and believe the truth, um, they have they'll have life. Look at verse thirty one. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the froward tongue shall be cut out. See, so um, out of their uh, as it says, uh, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. Okay, the word of God, the gospel. Um, okay, a few more verses and we'll be done. Go to Second um, Thessalonians one seven through nine. Second Thessalonians. I'll start with verse six. Second Thessalonians one uh, six through no, uh, nine. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation uh, to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from, from heaven with his mighty angels in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. See? And so... Um, uh, this this is what this is the word of God and this is, will happen. See when Christ uh, judgment day, those that obey not the gospel, as it says right there, obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ in verse eight. So um, the word is going to judge them. And I want to end by reading uh, Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Revelation 20. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, this would be the resurrection of the unjust here, because these are, these are uh, they're being they'll be judged. Say, and uh, uh, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. So you have the Bible or the the Word of God, which uh, we read in John 12, 48, uh, that they'll be judged by the word. And here there's the book of life. See? We're judged out of those things which are written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. And death and hell delivered up, or the grave delivered up the dead, which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. See? And of course, the Lord wrote the book of life before the foundation of the world. And remember, we read verses like, I know my sheep. See, And then uh, we seen another verse that, that he says, I never knew you. Those, those were 
people not in the book of life. But see, and and this is where the, this is where they're going to end up. Uh, the ones that Jesus never knew, whosoever was found written, not written, not found written in the book of life, was cast in the lake of fire. And remember in Luke 10 today, it, he says, rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So there's um, God has chosen us uh, before the foundation of the world uh, and brought us uh, into the kingdom of his son. We're born again. We're born from above. Uh, our sins are all washed away through the blood of our Lord Jesus. Okay, that should cover this, the uh, study uh, for those verses today. And uh, so, Lord willing, we'll pick it up um, next week on verse 6, Revelation 11, verse 6.